We now present the Stellar Maris system, which is an acronym of Stellar Marine Refractive Imaging Sensor. When a submarine needs to look outside the water, it uses a periscope. Submarines have been using this technology for over 100 years already. However, it may draw attention. What if we had a virtual periscope? A periscope that, contrary to a true periscope, is completely submerged underwater and therefore does not draw any attention. Images taken upwards from below the water suffer from severe distortions, as in this example. You may be familiar with it from the swimming pool or the sea. What causes these distortions? When the water is flat, this point projects to this pixel. When the water is wavy, the same point now projects to a different pixel, so we get a distorted image. If the water surface was known, we could back project to obtain a flat water image, but the water surface is not known. So, we propose a novel virtual periscope system. The input is a distorted image. The output is an image with reduced distortions. All this in a single instance using an estimation of the water surface. An additional input to our system is the sunlight field, which I will soon explain about. We observe an analogy between our problem and ground-based astronomy. Telescopes observe a distant object through atmospheric layers. Here, an underwater camera observes an airborne object through a flat water surface. Ground-based astronomy is affected by turbulence in the air. Thus, the image is degraded by random refractions. In analogy, Images taken by a submerged virtual periscope are degraded by the random refractive water surface. To partly correct for atmospheric random refractions, telescopes use a wavefront sensor. It senses the atmosphere by imaging a distant known guide star through an array of lenslets or pinholes. From deviations of the guide star imagelets, the instantaneous refractive disturbance is partially sampled and estimated. Then, this disturbance can be countered using adaptive optics. The analogy of the problem points to our solution. The water surface can be estimated by measuring a known guide star through the water surface simultaneously with viewing the scene of interest. Our stellar guide is obvious, the Sun. From deviations of the resulting sun imagelets, the instantaneous refractive water surface is partially sampled and estimated. This enables significant reduction of distortion using physics-based geometric computations per frame. So, our system is Stellar Marine Refractive Imaging Sensor, and we call it Stella Maris, which is Latin for Star of the Sea. It comprises a Shock Hartmann sensor and a viewing part. This is the viewing part of the system, and this is the wave sensor. Now let us concentrate on the wave sensor. The water surface slope sensor includes an array of pinholes and an image plane. When the water surface is flat, Sun rays project to the focal plane of the pinholes, forming a small image of the Sun per pinhole. We obtain a uniform grid of Sun imagelets on the image plane. This is the sunlight field. When the water surface is wavy, Sun rays refract according to the waves and project to the solar image plane. We obtain a distorted grid of Sun imagelets. Here is an example from a real experiment of the sun light field under varying water waves. Each blob is an image of the sun corresponding to one pinhole. You can see how random waves cause random displacements in the grid. Let us look at a single sun ray. 
The vector S water is the direction of a sun ray in the water. In air, the unit vector pointing to the sun is S air. Our goal is to estimate the water surface and thus we seek the normal N. This is a vector form of Snell's law. The vector pointing to the sun is always known given the time and geographic location. The vector inside the water is extracted from the sensor image data. So we can compute N. We repeat this process for each pinhole. And we obtain the normal field seen here. Surface estimation from its sample normals is related to photometric stereo. The water surface is typically smooth and integrable. Thus, we perform numerical integration of the water surface gradient field to obtain the water surface. To sum up, we have a wave sensor to estimate the water surface and a viewing system coupled together to see the view of interest through a reconstructed surface. Before experiments, I present a full system simulation. This is our distant view. We look at this region of the scene. This here is the Stella Maris Monastery seen from the Haifa Badgalim beach. We are going to distort it. We simulate a wavy water surface. Using the simulated surface and the simulated coastal scene, we simulate a distorted image. Using the simulated surface, we simulate the sunlight field. Using a simulated sunlight field, the water surface shape is estimated. The reconstructed water surface is similar to the true one, but it exhibits a bias. It is a limitation of the system and further details are in the paper. Using the reconstructed surface, we recover the scene. This is the original scene and the distorted one. This is the corrected scene. Notice how the scale is corrected. There are different ways to implement our approach. This is our implementation. For the wave sensor, we use a pinhole array, which is easy to manufacture in large size. Below, there is the solar image plane. We used a diffuser as the imaging plane. Below the diffuser, there is the sensor camera to image the sunlight field. We need another camera to view the object outside. Since the sunlight field and the object must be imaged at the same time, these two cameras need to be synchronized. To alleviate camera synchronization, we use two mirrors. Here is the actual implementation of our system. This is the pinhole array and below is the diffuser. We use a mirror here to observe the diffuser with this camera placed in front of the sensor. Sun rays refracted by the water surface irradiate the diffuser, reflect in the mirror and imaged by the camera. And we have an area on the water surface that we thus estimate. Now recall that the image of an airborne scene should be acquired simultaneously with the sunlight field. For synchronization, we use the same camera and another mirror. The object is imaged through the mirror reflection. A single image contains both the sunlight field and a distorted airborne scene. Here is a photo of the actual system. There are some design trade-offs. Let us look at these two sun rays that form these two sun blobs where the blob size is delta p. We need to sample the slopes densely enough, but the blobs should not overlap. On the other hand, the system needs to be sensitive enough to measure also small slopes. Suppose that the slope angle is theta, the maximum slope is denoted by capital theta, the small change in the slope is delta theta, and the wavelength is lambda. Then we derive this trade-off formula. The relative wave-slope angular resolution can be trade-off for special resolution. Before errors from aliasing and correspondence take effect, the details are in the paper. 
We tested our system in the sea and also performed quantitative experiments in the lab. Let us start with the sea experiment. Here is the wave sensor and the viewing mirror. This is the camera that captures both. This is us working hard at the Haifa beach. Here you see the system submerged. Here is the image taken by the camera, capturing both the sensor and the outside image. We imaged a person standing outside. Here are two results. Notice how the water mask is corrected here. You can judge by yourself which one is better looking. There are algorithms that can give you a beauty score based on the geometry of your face. There is also a website called Anaface where you can upload your image and get an attractiveness score based on face geometry by marking certain thematic features. You can see that based on their score, the corrected faces are way more attractive comparing to the distorted ones. For more quantitative results, we made controlled lab experiments. The sensor is placed in an aquarium and the camera is placed outside. Above, we placed a checkerboard pattern. Here is the sensor and the checkerboard pattern captured together by the camera. Here I show a quantitative result. This is the distorted checkerboard. The ground truth square size is 5 cm in the x and y directions. So we measure line length, crossing, adjusted corners of the squares in the x and y directions and plot them in this scatter plot. For example, this line and this line give this point in the scatter plot. Another point is this one. Here are all the distorted points. We computed the spread of these points and the curvature of grid lines. Here is our result of the corrected checkerboard. The checkerboard is much more uniform. Similarly, we overlaid the points of the corrected grid in this scatter plot. You can see that the corrected pattern is closer to the real size as it has lower standard deviation and curvature. So correction for the waves by our method significantly lowers the spread and curvature. Which other works are related? There are multi-camera methods dedicated to recovering a wavy water surface. These methods, however, often rely on a known artificial target on the other side of the water surface or on an active lighting. Both can be detected and draw attention. They are thus not suitable for a virtual periscope. There are a couple of theoretical works using other principles. There is a method for recovering the water surface using sky polarization. It was not tested as a virtual periscope. There is also a theoretical work hypothesizing a viewing system that is based on analysis of radiance near the edge of snail's window, but we did not find any proof of feasibility. There are methods that actually looked through the water surface attempting to understore images using video. In addition, we also had work on motion detection and triangulation in this setting. These methods require several video frames and thus can be applied only to static scenes. In this work, we take a different approach and suggest a single image method and a practical implementation. In addition to being standalone, our approach can also improve multi-frame methods. We presented a virtual periscope approach with analogy to astronomy. We passively estimated wavy water surface using the sun. This estimated water surface helps to reduce scene distortions. We also analyzed the limitations.